There are so many opinions on who should and who shouldn't be flying more advanced wings, how many hours you should have. Even the manufacturers of these wonderful gliders have a set hour. Well, what does that mean? Like, why do they have a number? And how do you progress in paramotoring? Let's find out. That turn is insane, it's lovely. There's so many people that I speak to who love to just simply go out and cruise, just like this. They just like to go out and fly. What is it that makes it a good pilot, makes you a good pilot? Or if you want to get into the sport, how do you be a good pilot? This is a new glider for me. Seven hours is relatively new. Does it look that intimidating right now? No, I'm doing nothing except for holding throttle. Oh, I love this. This is too much logic. But here, if I was on a beginner glider and I pull the brake, it will turn slowly and sweet as can be. But this one, if I pull the brake a little bit, like there we go, and we're down and around. And if I held that, if I held that on an advanced glider like this, I could easily enter a spiral. A beginner glider is not going to just like pitch into a spiral. And God forbid you get that beginner glider to enter into a spiral. It has a tendency to want to exit that spiral, that spiral because it has your best interest in mind. This glider doesn't serve that purpose. It's not always wondering like how to get you back to that straight and level. I've come to believe that in conditions like this, these are ideal conditions right now. Conditions like this are conditions that you should always strive to fly in. And when the conditions aren't like this, I opt to wait. Like I don't, I don't prefer to fly in crappy weather. And so if you're flying in crappy weather, one of the things is, is that you're very likely to scare yourself quite a bit. If you were to get yourself in that situation without the correct inputs, you could very likely just go straight into the ground and hurt yourself on an advanced glider or on a beginner glider when you're too low. I imagine people do that because they're not understanding how their glider works. And the way to understand how your glider works is to spend time with your glider. You have to learn how these things work. Corey's closed today. Time to play. I've actually never been down in here, so this is new. Buddy. <laughs> Beautiful rocks over here. Could I fly like this as a beginner? Hell no. No, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't. I would be scared. Honestly, I would be too scared to do this. And so many of you have seen Tucker Got videos and you aspire to be able to fly like Tucker Got, but it doesn't come to you right away. And it didn't come to me right away either. Honestly. Like, Flying like this takes a lot of time spent with your gliders. But you can get there. People progress at different rates. In the last video that I shared, where I unboxed and had my first flight on this advanced glider, several people commented asking, well, how many hours do you have? I actually do meet the hours. I fly just about every flyable day there is. Riddle me this, Batman. 
If you believe that a number is what truly tells you when you're ready to jump up to the, a more advanced glider, I have news for you. The manufacturers must do something to inform you that the glider, the advanced gliders, are just that. They're more advanced, meaning they there's more risk that could come with it. A set number is, is their best guidance to tell you what the average person, what they predict the average person would be ready to fly or understand how a glider works. I spend a lot of time with gliders and um, I may have been ready before that 200 hour mark. That 200 hour mark I do think is a, is a really good indicator um, if you were just like absolutely clueless as to how many hours you specifically should have. Maybe get to that 200, 300 hour mark and then assess yourself like can you do X, Y, and Z? Can you um, control, like, is your energy management on point? And uh, can you land the glider where you want it to land? Do you know how to respond to motor out situations? Uh, if you find yourself in a spiral, can you get out of that spiral on, in, in doing all of this on beginner slash intermediate or more advanced gliders? If you can do that, um, then speak with somebody who's really well informed. Who, who may have seen you and, and can give you an honest look at yourself. Do you fly in valleys like this, where you don't know if there's gonna be outs? <laughs> no, I do, I know this area quite well. But it's a beautiful area. There's the car! <laughs> I found the car! Whoa, 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 whoa. God. Okay, so what did I just experience back there? Uh, that's called rotor. And over here, there's not much wind blowing. I can feel the wind getting rocked around just a little bit, but it's not out of my comfort zone. Back there, that blew my mind. That was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's a replay. But seriously, when I started out, I would have expected that if I was on a glider like this, that it would just simply collapse if it hit rotor like that. It didn't, I think for two reasons. One, you should, the, the equipment is more reliable than you think of when it gets into, or more reliable than I expected it to be than when I started flying paramotors. When I thought of advanced gliders in the beginning, I thought for sure advanced gliders are the ones that collapse. That's what advanced gliders are. They're the ones that kill you. When it's really not that, you're the one that can kill you by not knowing what to do um, when the glider does what it tells, what you tell it to do. Now I'm like, cold, what's that? Anyways, okay, so where was I? That was like, number one is I had this expectation. Secondly, the experience. Don't get me wrong, as advanced as a glider or as beginner as a glider can be, they can all collapse. They can all collapse um, when you put them in elements where the air is disturbed, plain and simple. Uh, there are things that I think that the pilot can do if they have the experience and the know-how to um, uh, prevent, to a degree, that collapse from happening. If you weren't experienced and you didn't know like what to do from just like the many, many little inputs you've made over the hours and hours and hours of flying, um, it has to be, at that point, it has to be uh, like uh, muscle memory. Man, it's smooth as can be right here though. Man, oh man. That's wild. All right, I'm gonna bring it in for a landing, okay? I'm gonna bring it in for a landing because at times like these, I want to land it and learn from it. <laughs> like, try to make sense of it. 